All right, welcome to Crazy Westinghouse video. This is going to be a series because this will take a little while to get this done. We're hoping to not destroy this thing. Uh, I'm no expert at this, as you know. Um, this is a Westinghouse Riviera made in the USA, probably 1957 or 58-ish. It needs a new cord. It's got cloth wiring in, in there. Uh, so what we need to do is start seeing how much of it will it'll come apart. We should be able to use the three blade, three jaw puller to get the blades off if that's a problem. Um, and then do as much rewiring, get some of the cloth wiring out of there and a new power cord. Um, we'll need to make a drawing uh, of what the... I, I sort of plan to just make a wiring harness, kind of copy what's in there and just hook it all up. We'll see if that works. I don't really know. Um, so the first thing will be to get the uh, the blades off. So there you go. Hope you enjoy this series. This is a really cool fan. This is one of my favorites uh, of the Westinghouse Riviera type fans. Uh, it's not adjustable, um, but that doesn't bother me as much. Some of these do have the tripod stand thing that's adjustable. You can adjust, you know, up and down, but. That doesn't bother me that much because those generally don't have the handle. I like this one with the big handle on it. So uh, anyway, that's the deal. Uh, we're going to take a look at it uh, and hope you enjoy this series of little videos here on this uh, Westinghouse Riviera fan. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. This front grill is a big part of the pain in the butt with these. I've only done one other of these. Um, all metal ones. The little Westinghouse Riviera that I have, that's all plastic. That fan works a little differently. Um, but on these, this is basically just sort of forced in here, this rim. On the back of the fan, I'm not really sure what's going on because on the back, we've got like a rubber seal. Um, I wonder if we can see if it goes, it's kind of pressed in. It's a little unclear if this back grill part comes off. But I'm not going to try to take it off. I'm just going to unhook the, uh, the switch. There's a little bolt. There's a little flat bolt that they often have on these. And this will come off and the switch will be able to come that way. I'm hoping to find then that the whole motor, everything will just come out that way. Just like the little one did. Um, and then we can just hose out the, this big ugly... It's not ugly, I love it, but you know what I'm saying. Other thing we need to be careful about is not letting this badge get destroyed any further than it is. It's a little, it's a little rough there, um, but that's our deal. So off the grill comes. It comes off pretty easy. Um, it's, uh, okay, so this one does appear to be welded or something like that here, and it kept its rounded shape. The other one, the later one, the Mobile Air, that one flattened right out. And it was a huge pain in the butt to get it back together. So this actually might not be that bad. I was really worried that this was going to be a big pain in the ass. But I think once we decide to put it all, well, once we decide to put it all back together, it shouldn't be that bad. That's kind of good news. So this is rusty, you know, not, not so great. Um, but uh, this has probably been off of here. You can see it doesn't look that awesome, but that's the deal with that. Let's see what else we got. All right, the blades came right off, no puller. Um, this must all be aluminum, uh, and they don't seem, the other one was pretty good too. It was a uh, flathead uh, end screw, uh, set screw, uh, no Allen head. That is kind of cool, just shows you how old this thing is. And so we will clean these up. You at the pitch on these blades, pretty incredible, huh? Uh, all right, stay tuned. All right, here's the big hex motor. Um, shaft needs a little cleaning to get that through there. It's got a big letter B on it. The windings all look, you know, pretty okay. A um, little overspray on the gray there. Uh, it says oil, O-I-L, for the oil spot. That's pretty cool. And then it's all attached onto the braces. Interesting thing about the braces is that they have cutouts to allow the steep pitch of the blades. That's kind of cool. And down here we can see our cloth wiring harness. Um, and there are some little pieces of tape. So this has been 
efforted by somebody. Uh, I'm, I'm, I believe that this is the original switch in the back there. Um, I have a feeling. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the cord here so that this thing comes apart. Um, I'm not that entirely worried. It's not polarized or anything. And it's probably not. This could be the original cord, but I don't think it is. It would, this, this is a little on the thick side. Uh, I think this is a more modern cord. Uh, and then this end, you know, these are, as you can see, this is just a replacement plug. These were very common back in the day. Um, so it's going to need, it doesn't have any up and down play, but it's got an awful lot back and forth. So this is going to need thrust washers. I don't have any, um, but we'll, we'll deal with that at some point. But for now, the point is just to get it apart and cleaned up. Well, as you can see, I've got it on its on its back so that it's a little easier to deal with the top. <laughs> it's not helping. So that it's a little easier to deal with the top screws and the bottom screws on the motor housing. Uh, however, uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to break the the big plastic handle, which is, as you can see, <laughs> much flimsier than we would like. <laughs> so this is the biggest thing we have to be really careful about. Maybe the smart thing to do would be to take it off while I'm working on the fan. Let's see if it comes off. This this is probably the best move. All right, that's the next plan. All right, so this is pretty interesting. The The handle, there's no actual bracket on the, the casing. It's got these little clips. <laughs> um, that hang off of the edge like this <laughs> it's incredible it's just these little pieces of metal with, <laughs> with these two screws all right we're going to take this the rest of the way off all right i'm going to try and show you what i'm talking about here are the two screws that are on the other side of a little tiny clip that holds this big plastic handle onto the fan so I got one loose uh, a little bit already. And then of course, what's really important is that I don't let this fall and break in the friggin' first place. The whole point of doing this was to not break this thing while cleaning up the fan. It's also gonna be a little bit of a deal to get this back together. Probably gonna need a separate, another set of hands here. Okay, so the screws are kinda loose now. Let's see if we can One, come on, they like these weird little sheet metal screws. That's one. There's two. And there's the little funny plate. So here's your handle. We'll give this a wipe down and put it somewhere safe. can't see it, but I put a tape measure under the motor to keep it from dropping down. And out you go. So there's your motor. This thing is freaking heavy. All right. This is our giant Westinghouse hexagonal motor thing is massive it's very heavy um, the windings all look okay we got some overspray from when they sprayed it gray as you can see there um, but they don't look blackened the copper looks like copper okay the end here will need to be addressed a little bit before we try to pull it apart as you can see there's a lot of bearing play in and out but nothing up and down um, so this is more related to uh, uh, thrust bearings. Uh, still packed with dust. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get it apart and we'll get it brushed out. Um, the first thing though that has to happen is we have to make a drawing so that we know what the heck happened here. 
with our uh, how to rewire this up um, and uh, I don't know if I'll go all the way up to the leaves that's a little out of my scope honestly um, so maybe I don't you, you really have to do that um, but I've never done it before and I don't really want to mess up this motor so we're gonna have to see what our best um, next move will be, you know. Um, okay, found something interesting. I never noticed this before, but it actually says A on the back and B on the front. That's kind of neat. Um, so uh, we're going to make a drawing um, for the switch. I'll try and keep an idea. We looks like we have yellow and blue and why are there two yellows? Why does there have to be two yellows, you dick? Maybe we'll call one yellow and one chartreuse. I don't, <laughs> Christ, seriously, I don't know. You see these little um, little splices that were put on? I'm not sure if that would have been done. Sometimes that was done at the factory, but I'm not sure. Uh, so as you can see, this is... Uh, well, we've run this once or twice, but this obviously wasn't that safe to run. So we'll make a diagram of our switch, and hopefully that helps me keep everything straight. Um... Because I don't want to uh, pour, you know, mess up the wiring on this and burn the motor. That's what we don't want to do. Um, these motors aren't super rare. You know, if I did screw this up, you could always go out on, you know, eBay or Craigslist and find a hundred and fifty dollar. You know, these mobile airs or these, uh, you know, whatever that these motors were in, they're out there. They're not super, super, super rare. They're just kind of expensive. So, as a, from a restoration standpoint, you could find another motor for this you'd just be into it more more dollars than you'd want to be, you know? Uh, so let's get a piece of paper and start trying to think about our diagram. One thing that's kind of interesting is there's all these little dealies coming out of the motor. They look like seeds. I don't think they're poop. I think they're seeds. So far, a whole bunch of them. This must have been used outside or something. 